Welcome to another episode of the book rant. It has been a long, long while. I'm going to be talking about a book that I finished a while back. I actually read through it a second time, and it's by a big name, R.L. Stein. It is Party Games, one of his Fear Street novels. Before I start, though, smash that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Seriously, like and share this video so I so help support me and make me help me make more content, show you more stuff from the horror genre, especially books and comics. And, yeah, follow me if you're into that stuff. I am going to try something. This has not been much of a rant, despite the name. So, I'm going to try to bring more energy into these videos, into these rants, this podcast. And hopefully you guys like it. Feel free to drop feedback anytime, no matter how mean. I'm a big boy. I can take it. But let's talk about the great and almighty R.L. Stein's Party Games. This book came out, I believe, in uh, 2012, t between 2012 and 2014. It was part of his new, like, uh, bringing back the Fear Street series books that was so popular back in the day. He wrote, like, five or six of them. I read most of them, and they're pretty good. Party Games was the first one, and man, it was a thrill ride. The story follows this girl, high schooler, named Rachel. Her family's going through some financial troubles, you know. Uh, mom and dad are struggling financially. Dad's like a manager at Walmart during nighttime or something. Probably the worst possible job you can have. Trust me, I know. Rachel works as a waitress in the Shadyside Diner. And she actually makes some good money there. For she still wishes she had more time just to chill and hang out and relax with her friends. Especially one of them who is Brendan Fear. And of course, she has a crush on this guy. Because a guy with the last name Fear is someone you should be crushing on. He's also rich. He's having a party on an island with no parents around. And Rachel's invited. And so are their other friends. So, yeah, what could possibly go wrong, right? A uh, kid with the last name Fear invites you to his private island. And, and by the way, at this point in the Fear Street series, everyone knows the Fears and Fear Street are a cursed family, a cursed road that... Bad stuff always happens to stuff connected to it. As even though this bad stuff has been happening for years, they still equate themselves with this street and that family. Thinking nothing bad will happen. Well, the body count in all the Fear Street books that have been released since the 90s would say differently and makes you question why these characters don't take precautions. But after the first act of that is well done, Showing us Rachel and her friends. They're all lovely characters. A couple funny guys who are jocks. She has fr female friends who, you know, she gets all, like, gossipy and funny with. And Brendan's a cool kid. He seems chill. He seems to have a mutual crush on Rachel. But there also seems to be some things he's hiding. For example... He invites his two cousins who kind of just pop out of nowhere and they have like almost no involvement in this story whatsoever. It's like it was just like, hey, let's invite these two guys just to bring up the body count and add more suspects. They didn't really have a part at all, so I don't know, but it's whatever. And, you know, they're enjoying the party. And then what happens? Of course, people start dying. So they run to the pier because they got to get the hell off this island. And, of course, the boats are gone. And the butlers, the people who were serving them on the island, all their food and everything, left on the boats. So the kids are abandoned. They're all alone. They're stuck with a supposed serial killer on this cursed island. And that's when they start questioning, Oh no, maybe we made a mistake. Gee, you think? More kids start to die along the way. This is a fast-paced book, and I did like that. Although I may sound like I'm trashing this book, I actually did really like it. I'm just, you know, trying to, again, be more expressionate with my podcasting. But it is fast-paced. The kills aren't brutal, and there is a little twist to them at the end. One that may get you angry, and another twist after that that may get you angrier. But this is an R.L. Stein novel. He may be writing for the young adults, as he says, but these books are also kid-friendly, too. So, you know, people do tend to die in Fear Street books. 
these books are meant to be something that you would probably still find in the kids section of a library. So don't be looking for something super gory or graphic like from Stephen King or J. Boo. However, spending time with Rachel and her friends as they try to survive on this island, survive the killer stalking them, trying to find out what's going on, and the couple twists I mentioned there along the way, as corny or so as they might be, this still shapes up to be a pretty good book that offers a thrill, something that is fun to read, especially when you're home alone, you're wondering, oh no, are we safe? Are me and my friends safe? If we go out tonight at this party, are we going to be safe? It's definitely not the worst novel like this, but yeah. So check out Party Games by Arl Stein. I'm also reading Into the Devil Nest by John Durgan, which is like a combination of Ozark and The Shining. I highly recommend this book. I'm almost done with it. And it's probably going to be five stars out of five. Um, and I'm also starting to read Welcome to Nightmare Island. This one's also pretty good. It's about a bunch of friends, again, going to an island, getting stuck there. And, of course, murder happens. So I'll let you know about that one later. But, yeah, check out these books and more. Follow me for more horror content. Peace out, book addicts.